Good morning and welcome to Detroit Unity Temple where the opportunities and challenges of living meet the wonderful and the dynamic and the beautiful and the awesome power of God. We want to say thank you for joining us via the internet. My name is Pastor Gregory. Guys, we want to say welcome to our spiritual community. Truly, this is the day that the Lord has made. And it is a blessing that you have joined us on this day to be a part of our wonderful spiritual community as we go forward on this magnificent Sunday. We would like to begin our service off with the reading of today's daily word. So I would like to invite up our very own, the Reverend David Stubbs, as he read to you today's daily word. And I want you to know it will make you put a smile on your face. Right now, ladies and gentlemen, today's daily word, the Reverend David Stubbs. Good morning, Detroit Unity. Today's word is smile. And our affirmation says, I share the joy and love of God when I smile. Even if a language barrier presents me from understanding another's words, I know that most people will respond to a friendly smile. My smile can convey goodwill, communicate delight from an unexpected blessing, or inspire awe at the sight of a star-filled night. A child not yet able to talk shares love and joy quite effectively with a sunny smile. I feel happy when others smile at me. This friendly and welcoming gesture reminds me that we are all one in spirit. Smiling at my reflection in the mirror, I see the light that shines from me. I feel a quickened awareness of the divine love and joy that are present everywhere as I realize how simply and beautifully my smile can express that love and joy without any need for words. Our scripture, the Lord makes his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. Numbers 6 and 25. As I told you, that was a wonderful daily word. And as I stated, today's daily word is smile. The affirmation, I share the joy and love of God when I smile. I just have to smile as I say that. And the scripture as he stated, the Lord made his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. I just love it, and I want to say, say this. If you don't have a copy of the Daily Word, you need to just get one. Now, let us affirm our congregational mission statement. Our mission and goal is to prayerfully demonstrate the teachings of Jesus Christ through the study and practice of truth principles. Now let us affirm our vision statement for the living temple. We, the spiritual community of Detroit Unity, joyously carry out the vision of renewal and prosperity for ourselves, our spiritual home, and our world. That is so important that we see that, we understand it, and we believe it. The food for thought is a very important one, and it comes from the United Negro College Fund that was started back in 1944. And these words, I'm sure you heard it, and I want to say it for you, something that we should always remember. 
The mind is a terrible thing to waste. And I want to say that again. The mind is a terrible thing to waste. Right now, more than ever before, we should always remember that. And when they created that slogan, it was designed to help the Negro College Fund so that they can empower African Americans throughout the South and around the world to help empower them to realize that the mind is a terrible thing to waste. And as our young people are going back to school, it's important that we encourage them to remember that thought. The mind is a terrible thing to waste. So right now, if this is your first time joining Detroit Unity, we welcome you and encourage everyone to visit the temple to be a part of our live and in-person service when the global health concern is clear. And just like you, I am so eager and waiting when that moment comes, and it is coming, when we can all come together and be a part of this magnificent connection so right now, I'm just sending out my heart to you to be a part of this connection that we, want, we can gather together. So at this time, I want you to be a part of what I'm going to ask. So I'm going to ask Gwen and Charles Scales to bring to us our today's hymn. So let us just turn it over to Charles and Gwen Scales as they bring to us this magnificent moment that can fill us with music and lift our spirit up. So ladies and gentlemen, and those of us who are watching together, Charles and Gwen Scales. This is a song about how to live our lives. How to love, live, serve in a holy, holy way. You know this. Charles, let's do it. Now I call and then you answer. Got it? Oh, let me love in a holy, holy
serve in a holy, holy way. Let me serve, let me serve in a holy, holy way. Oh, let me serve in a holy, holy way. Let me serve, let me serve in a holy, holy way. Oh, let me care for those around the world. Let me care, let me care for those around the world. Oh, let me care for those around the world. everyone inspired I can see people just moving with that tune and if you were doing the same thing I was doing you was just grooving I'm not gonna get that started but it is so important <laughs> wow I love that song holy holy way and Gwen does a, such a magnificent job with that song and Charles so this is that point where we come to this very moment so I'd like for you to take time right now to acknowledge the people and things in our lives that we are grateful for. Whenever I take a moment to just think about this time period, I can think of so many individuals and so many moments in my life that I'm grateful for. I want you to do that as well. So if you're watching this service and if you're at your computer, or if you're watching it on a screen or you just make hold that thought think of someone that you're grateful for it could be a family member it could be somebody that you miss that you haven't seen in a long time go to your heart and just let them know and just send out a vibration of love to them and tell them send that energy to them that I'm grateful for you because at this very moment that's what it's about you see your vibrational frequency Frequency would go out to them like a radio wave and touch them and uplift them And if you're feeling down just send it to God and say thank you God for all that you're doing for me You see I'm grateful for so many people in my lives Last Wednesday we did a service for Betty Pitchford and I'm grateful for her family. I'm grateful for those members I'm grateful for each one of you. I am so grateful for the chaplains I'm grateful for our members and I'm grateful for the unity churches throughout our community. I'm grateful for Royal Oak, Unity of Royal Oak. I'm grateful for Godland. I'm grateful for West Side Unity. I'm grateful for the unity churches and throughout our community, the unity worldwide movement. I'm grateful for Transforming Love community. You see, we need to be grateful for people no matter where we're at. That's a part of our entire unity family. I'm grateful for those ministers that maintain that continuation of efforts. Because you see, it's about God that I'm grateful for that flows in each and every one of us. Because at every unity center, there's somebody right now that's holding that same thought. And that we appreciate them. Because it's about love, it's about our truth, and I'm grateful for them. So right now, I'm grateful for this next person who's going to come up and be a part of this segment. I'm grateful for her, Miss Bessie Harris. So I'd like to turn it over to her, Miss Bessie Harris. Thank you, Reverend. 
Good morning, my Detroit Unity family. Let us affirm our statement of truth together, please. There is only one presence and one power active in my life and in the universe. God, the good, omnipotent. Now, let us say our prosperity thought, and I will read it to you, and this really hit home for me with what, I'm, with what I am doing now. And it reads, my dream will flourish. My plans will succeed. My destiny will be assured, and the desires of my heart will be granted. Ooh, that's powerful. Let me just say that, read that again. And this time I'm reading it for me. Um, and you all read it with me. My dream will flourish. My plans will succeed. My destiny will be assured. And the desires of my heart will be granted. Thank you, God. Now let us prepare for meditation by tuning out all worldly distractions. Everything that may be going on in your home, become still and comfortable as we prepare for meditation by singing the Lord's Prayer. Now is that very special moment where we center ourselves and go into that very quiet place, that place where there is only God. The master teacher said, be still and know that I am God. I love the meditation. And please know that meditation is a moment where we simply go to God. In the meditation it says, I shine my light and feel protected. The feeling of fear that creep into my life may conjure childhood memories of scary and nightmare images of noise. I want you to take this moment to just 
to let go and feel the very presence of God all around you. So become still in this moment, no matter where you're at, to let go and to know that God is with you right now. Dear Holy Spirit, we come before you no matter where we're at. So I invite you to, to find yourself in a very relaxed place. Take in that deep breath. Find yourself in a very comfortable, very relaxed space. And just take in that breath of life. Oh, dear Holy Spirit, we know that all that God is, I am. And all that I am, God is. In this very moment, no matter where you may be at, know that God is surrounding you with a divine light. And know that you are alive and you can feel that divine presence within you, touching every cell within your body. There is a divine presence of God flowing in you right now. Hear those words, be still and know that I am the Christ within you. Breathe that thought in. Go to that deep space within yourself. Allow that presence of God to just touch you and take you there. Breathe to that very center of your being and hold that thought. Allow that thought to just settle into you. Oh, dear God, you are my light and my salvation. You are that truth within me. In this very moment, we can feel your presence. No matter where you may be at, let go and let God feel you in this moment of love. Oh, the Holy Spirit. We come before you and we give you the glory. And we simply say thank you, God, for in this moment we say thank you, for we know that there's only one presence and one power active in our life. God, the good, omnipotent. And so it is. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. So it is. This is a wonderful song written by a very special individual. Quincy Jones heard him and decided to record it. This song has been recorded by so many wonderful musicians and vocalists, but it's perfect for today's lesson. Here it is.
Everything must change Nothing stays the same Everyone will change No one stays the same The young become the old Mysteries do unfold For that's the way of time And nothing and no one goes unchanged Except rain comes from the clouds, sun lights up the sky, and hummingbirds do fly. Winter turns to spring, the wounded heart. But never much too soon But everything must change The young become the old And mysteries do unfold For that's the way of time Cause there are not many things in life That you, you, you can be sure of Except rain comes from the clouds And sun lights up the sky And hummingbirds do Good morning. Woo, 
I miss you guys so much. I miss you so much. Just as many of you, I also thought that by now we'd be back in the physical sanctuary, but we're not able to do that right now until this health concern is over. But what I need you to know is my talk title is This Too Shall Pass. We've got to believe that with every fiber of our being. But also what I want you to know is that we're not praying the way that we're accustomed to um, in this physical sanctuary, but we still are doing it right where we are. We get to connect heart to heart, and that's a wonderful thing. No matter where you are, we get to do that. I want you to know that each week I see your chats that post and give me encouragement. I love it. I also want you to know I feel your encompassing love as I do my meditations and messages each week. So know that I love you and I miss you just the same. And we have to affirm and know in our hearts that this too shall pass. So we're going to take a moment right now just to get grounded. And I say, Lord, I thank you for not giving me a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart are acceptable in your sight because you are my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. I'm so thankful that in unity we practice this thing called affirmative prayer. I'm grateful that we practice this prayer that teaches us to give thanks for a thing before it even shows up. That encourages us to know that believing is seeing. It's a prayer that allows us to stand in truth, moving from fear to faith. We thank you, God, for affirmative prayer. We thank you, God, for the knowingness that this too shall pass. I also must let you know that I'm grateful for a grandmother who says to me all the time, Mel, Mel, trouble don't last always. She says that God hears your heart, and he's already working that thing out for you. I'm so grateful for that. So as I learn these things, I teach. This too shall pass. A change gonna come. <laughs> Everything must change. We've got to know that. Now more than ever, we've got to believe that. We change. We change our minds, our appearances, and even our circumstances. Our seasons are changing. Can you believe in a few days it's gonna be fall? In just a few days, so the leaves are changing. Everything is changing. Technology changes, and we thank God for that. Because 20 or 30 years ago, if this had happened, we'd be in trouble. All we had back then was the two-way phone. So I would have to call two people, and you would have to call two people. You know how it goes, and they would call two friends, and they would call two friends, and so on, and so on. And that's how we'd be linked. So we're just thankful that technology has changed also. We're grateful for that. So I say to you, in the midst of this global health pandemic, where it seems that our sense of normalcy was stolen like a thief in the night, we have to remember that God's word will not return to us void. It will not. God will do what he says he's going to do. This too shall pass. What feels like 2020, which feels like 100 years, is only but a second to God. Because remember, his time is not our time. Let's be thankful for that. Today, as we talk about this title of This Too Shall uh, Pass, uh, my spiritual context is coming from the book of Joel. I'm gonna ask how many of you know, either because it happened to you or by hearsay, that you can still make progress in times of distress? Even when things are stressful and it feels like distress, you can still make process. If you've never believed it before, you've got to believe it now. We have to believe that. Even in the midst of your tiredness or weariness or fed upness, you've got to know that you can still make process. It's okay, or progress. It's okay if you're going slow. It's all right, take your time. Remind yourself that despite appearances and despite all these things that are going on, we still know that this too shall pass. So do what's yours to do right now. So here we go when we look in the book of Joel. It's another one of those little, small, three-chapter books. Joel was a prophet. He was a prophet who urged people to return to God. My Bible is the New International Version, and it explains Joel as the book of where, where it explains that uh, God's intense desire for intimacy with all of his people. And it says that God cares for you with a passionate concern, and his desire is to fill you with his spirit and to receive you in his love. We need to know that right now more than anything, that God loves us, 
That's all he wants is us to have an intimate relationship with him. So as the book of Joel begins, we learned that there was an invasion of locusts. And locusts at the time was their plague, their pandemic, their coronavirus, if you will. We learned that locusts can destroy the land. Joel describes it as a great swarm of locusts that came around. He said it was so intense that he put out a call to the elders. He asked the elders, has anything like this ever happened in your days or the days of your forefathers? Just like what we're experiencing right now with this coronavirus in 2020, many of us have asked our, found ourselves asking our, our, our elders, um, has this ever happened before? My girlfriend said that her young daughter said, well, mom, when this happened back in your day, what did you do? And so she had to explain this has not happened since I've been alive, baby. That caused a little alarm. But we want to know with our intellectual mind that if something has happened before and it's no longer going on, that we can get through it. That's the important thing. We need to know is something about if somebody else has gone through it, we can go through it also. So that's important to know. So what we have to know is that all these things that have come in the past, we've had the Spanish flu, the swine flu, the Asian flu, but they're no longer a concern. Polio, Ebola, Zika are now all manageable. They're no longer a present threat for us. That's a bit of reassurance that this thing too shall pass. We need to know and believe that, and I'm gonna continue to say it. Say it for yourselves while you're at home, this too shall pass. So Joel goes on to say to the elders, Tell it to your children, and let your children tell it to their children, and their children to the next generation. He's like, talk about it. Remember a few weeks ago I did this uh, talk, and it was called Talk, Trust, Feel. Joel is doing that talk part. Talk about it. Somebody say something. We need to know how this thing might turn out. He talks about what the locust, or COVID-19, has destroyed. He says the ground, the grain, the vines, the wheat, the barley. He sees it as a call to repentance. It's that time where he says, you better get right or God is going to get you. Mm. I've heard that talk so much during this time right now. But I want you to know that I know that God is a loving God. So here's what we get to do, unity principle number three. I create my experiences by what I choose to think and feel and believe. For me, God is a good and gracious God. So in chapter 2, verse 12 Joel, of Joel, it reads, Even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. For me, it's the phrase, return to me that stands out. Returns to me means that you cannot change the past, but you can work towards the now. I've got this plaque, um, and I even have it here, and it says, though no one can go back and make a brand new start, anyone can start from now and make a brand new end. I love that, because it just says that we still have power to do different things. Well, it's well documented in the Bible. God knows that we fall short. It just happens. It's the human part of the spiritual journey that we're on. Sometimes we miss the mark, but what I know is that he still loves and accepts us no matter what. So Joel goes on to say, rend your heart and not your garments. So many of us are worried about this and that. God don't want your, 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 your money. That's wonderful. He wants your heart more than anything. You know, that's the important thing. So I drive this nice car and let me show this. It doesn't matter what you pull up to the church house in. God wants your heart. So Joel says to rend your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love, and he re relents from sending calamity. So when I think about that, that's a perfect example of our unity principle number one, that God is present in everywhere, in everything. God is good, and he's just in everything, everywhere. So after God declares for the people to return to him, when he says, come to me, he says in the midst of swarming locusts or a COVID-19 pandemic or any other troubles that we may experience, he says, so I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten. 
so I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten. He said, the crawling locusts and the chewing locusts, my great army which I send among you. He said, you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God who has dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be put to shame. Then you shall know that I am God in the midst of Israel. Then you would know that I am the Lord your God and there is no other. My people shall never be put to shame. So I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten. Well, that tells me two things. That tells me that this too shall pass and it tells me that God is a healer and a restorer of all and everything. God, if you don't know nothing else, God is a healer and a restorer. God will do what he said he's going to do. His word won't return to you void. That's the trust part of that talk idea before. You've got to trust that. You've got to know it for yourself. So let us break this down in unity style like we do. Unity has often been called practical Christianity because we take the word and we break it down so that it can be applied to everyday circumstances that we're experiencing right now. Here are the facts. Even during times of distress, we still have things that we can do. We can't just sit down or stop because we're tired. We can't do that. We have to use the gifts of divine wisdom that are given to us. For example, during a rainstorm, we turn on our wipers. During a snowstorm, we turn on our traction, on our tires, right? So in personal storms, be it locusts or health challenges or financial worries or COVID-19, we must turn on our inner lights and open ourselves up to the God presence that's within us to show us the way. God said, even now, return to me with all your heart. Even right now in the midst, not even now, especially right now, I need you to return to me. Know that I am the Lord your God. Know that. Our words have power. We have to affirm it. So don't just say it. Feel it in every fiber of your being. Feel it. All those 72 million or 1,000 cells uh, that Reverend Guy speaks about, you have to feel it and know it. Again, this lets us know that no matter what shows up in our life, the important thing is how we show up against it. How are you going to show up? How are you going to show up as God's eyes, ears, and feet here on this earth? How do you show up in the midst of this? Are you the one saying, oh, this thing ain't going to never, oh, I don't know. We're not going to do that because we know that this too shall pass. Let us return to God with all of our hearts. Not from a place of fear, but from a space of love. Let us stand together and affirm that even though things may look bleak at times, because I can uh, affirm that that happens sometimes, we must be assured that trouble don't last always and that this too shall pass. It's okay to be afraid because something seems new or different or unprecedented, unusual, unfamiliar, but we still have to work even in the midst of that. That's that feel. It's okay to feel afraid. So we've got talk, trust, and feel. It's okay to feel afraid, but you still have things to do knowing that this too shall pass. When I stop and think about it, I realize that today is the tomorrow that I worried about yesterday. Today is the tomorrow that I worried about yesterday. This too shall pass. Can you remember a time in your life when you were in a situation that there seemed there was no way out? Where you felt exhausted or overwhelmed or depleted, like there was just no good way this thing was going to end? What did you do? For some of you, what are you doing? Because that's your situation right now. You pray and you meditate and you connect with God and you bring out the good in your life. That's another one of our principles. You pray and you meditate, you connect with God and you bring out the good in your life. You see it right. You return to the Lord, who is right here, really. You can't really run away from it. Sometimes we think you are, because God is right here. He's right in your heart. I don't know when you're turning and you think you're running away, but, but take some time and dig deep and, and return to God and see what he has for you. God can only do through you or to you what he can do through you. So open up your heart and let him work. Allow him to live in, through, and as you. Allow him to do that, to show up. 
got a little song that reminds me of this. I don't know what's going to happen. I can't tell you that. But I just know that God has always got us. And this little song says, it's going to be nice. It's going to be nice. Whatever's in store for me, it's going to be nice. It's crazy right now, Lord, but that's when you shine. I can't stop shouting, it's going to be nice. I don't know what's going to happen, but I just know that this too shall pass. I'm ready for the Lord to restore you, to restore me, to do a new thing in you and me, to show up in a mighty way in our lives. I'm excited for that to happen. I don't know everything, but I know for sure that this too shall pass. Amen? Amen. Yes. So it's our time right now that we prepare to bless as we have been blessed. We ready? Take a moment. Take your offertory envelope. Place it in your left hand. Cover it with your right hand and bless it. And together we're going to say divine love in and through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. So when we say this, we know that right now there are ways that you can continue to give to Detroit Unity Temple, because like I told you before, church don't go on vacation. We're still here. Things still need to happen. We're still feeding people in the community. We're still doing all these wonderful things. Church does not close. So you can click the button here that tells you how you can donate. You can bring it to the church. You can do it by direct deposit, however you feel comfortable doing it. We don't have a certain way that you can do it, so we do that. And when we do it, we stop and we say, thank you, Lord, for these blessings that continue to come upon us. We're so grateful for them. We're using them for your kingdom here on earth. We're using them to do what it is ours, ours to do right now. We thank you for the ability to be blessed and to bless other people. In your son Jesus' name this morning, we simply say amen. Amen. This is a song about having faith. We have to help each other. Gotta have faith, I say. Gotta have faith, my friend. Come on, Charles. These 
song and a beautiful message that stated this too shall pass we are so grateful that Miss Melanie Porsche Donna High is a part of our service wow 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 what a beautiful and awesome Sunday remember to invite your friends and family to join our 10 a.m. Sunday service broadcast by logging on to www.detroitunity.com and click on the Sunday service worship button. We encourage you to remain strong in faith and looking to the divine light of God. Right now, I'd like to welcome Miss Bessie Harris to the podium with this week's announcements. Come on up, Miss Bessie Harris. Thank you, Reverend. Thank you, Melanie. As you all can see, I'm smiling because I know this too shall pass. And I will see my Detroit Unity family in this sanctuary again. Good morning again. Detroit Unity Temple chaplains and Board of Trustee members will continue making wellness calls throughout the month of September. If you have not received your wellness call or any of the other correspondence from the church, please email dutreception at gmail.com and put in the subject line, update my info. Have you been experiencing more anxiety, strained relationships, and moments of questioning your faith, impatience, or feelings of loss this year. We need you to join us. Part two of Seasons for Forgiveness. And that will take place today at noon. If you are grieving the loss of a loved one and you just really, really, really need someone to talk to, please contact Open Arms Grief and Loss Program. And they can be contacted at area code 313-369-5789. Heart-Centered Metaphysics class is Thursday evenings from 6 to 8 p.m. via Zoom. Email dutreception at gmail.com to register. 
And in the subject line, please put heart-centered. And remember, this is an ongoing class. The caregiver support groups meet the second and fourth Thursday of the month. The next meeting dates are Thursday, September the 24th, and October the 8th. Session one takes place from 1 to 3 p.m. and section two from 6 to 8. Become a member and learn about senior services, organizations, and resources to help you and your care partner find solutions to challenging issues. Please contact Marilyn Lawson to register by calling area code 313-289-9672. Yes, Detroit Unity, it's that time for you to think about becoming a Detroit Unity Temple board member. If you are a skilled individual, and we have a lot of them at Detroit Unity Temple, and you love Detroit Unity Temple as we all do, you have a vision for our future and can be committed to serve. We want and we really need you as a board member. Additional information will be available in the weeks to come. Now I need you just to think on it, smile on it, and meditate on it. October birthdays and anniversary people, if you would like your special day recognized during service, please send your name and date of birth or marriage to dutreception at gmail.com. This must be received by September 28th. Please, in the subject line, please put October party. Reverend, this completes my announcements for this Sunday. I'm smiling on my way back to my seat. Thank you, Bessie. As we bring our service to a close, please join us with the Unity Worldwide Ministry everywhere as we pray each Sunday the following prayer. We know that God is a love that has no end and a power that knows no bounds. God's healing power of divine life is restoring, healing, and revitalizing our world in this very moment. We let go of any fears or anxieties, and we affirm that all are safe, healthy, and protected. We bless all those who support us in maintaining vibrant, radiant health we express divine life in all we think, say, and do. We bless our global family with radiant health, peace of mind, and abundant love. And that prayer is so important. Before we close, I want to bring up a few points. One, please remember that we are continuing with our capital campaign. Please. It is very important that you support this effort. Send in your funds or your whatever you can do to support that capital campaign. Send in your effort or whatever you can to DUT reception to the Detroit Unity Temple. Put on the outside of your envelope, just capital campaign. Your donation, your gifts will be a blessing to us and we can use it to continuously keep our building going forward, to continue to beautify it, to make sure that we are standing strong in our faith and our continuous growth. Your support is a blessing to us and we deeply would appreciate it. To send it to Detroit Unity Temple, 
and address it at 17505 2nd Avenue, Detroit, Michigan, 48203. You can use the PayPal button that you will see on our screen. But our capital campaign is very important. Thank you for that in advance. The other thing I want to share with you that's so important, please remember that we are only a few months away from the most important election in our history. You have to recognize the value of your vote. Your vote is so critical this time like never before. And you can vote, and if you're going to vote early, make sure you get your ballot and take it to your city hall. You can mail it in or you can go down directly. But register to vote. Mail it in, take it down, but do not be absent. Too many individuals sacrifice their lives so that you can have that ability to vote. Do not miss out on this opportunity. So much is at stake and we need to do our part and also take advantage of the census. If, you're not, if you have not registered or involved yourself with that or made yourself empowered, we have to show and to do our part this coming months. We're only a few months away from taking part. And don't just vote yourself. Take someone with you. Encourage your nephews, your uncles, your family members. Reach out to as many people as you can and tell them we have to make a difference. We are important. And let's do something like never before. Go and vote. This is important. I can't emphasize that enough. I can't tell you who to vote for, but I will say this, go and vote. That is the most important thing I can tell you. So let us get ready to close. And I want you to say, I want to say thank you to all the essential workers our firemen, our police officers, our nurses, our healthcare workers, and all those individuals who make sure that we are safe each and every day. I want to say thank you to Charles and Gwen, to Billy, to Effie, to Melanie, thank you. This too shall pass. You did an excellent talk. To Bessie, to John and Carlos, to everyone that makes this to our board, to all those around us, to those you may not even see and especially to you for joining us to be a part of our Sunday service. You are a blessing. So now let us all stand together and know that together we can make this work as we sing our prayer for protection and our peace song. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. And so it is, amen. Free. Let a 
lost warmth with each other in perfect harmony. Let peace begin with me. Let this be the moment now. With every step I take, let this be my solemn vow to take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally. Let there be peace on earth and let it be. With you.